Hello everyone and welcome to the 2018 Storm Spotter Training from the National Weather Service in Milwaukee. I'm meteorologist Ben Herzog and I'll be guiding you through this training. Before we get started, I would like to provide you with a quick disclaimer. Spotting severe weather can be dangerous. If you do not feel safe, you should seek shelter immediately. Your safety is your priority and it's much more important than a report. The National Weather Service does not condone, endorse, or recommend storm chasing. It's a dangerous practice and should not be attempted. If you are going to go out and do some mobile storm spotting, there are a few safety concerns to be aware of. First of all, always spot with a partner. This allows the driver to focus on the road while the passenger can look at the sky. Watch for water on the road. Hydroplaning can be a serious threat to drivers. You must obey all traffic laws. Just because you're out trying to get storm reports for the National Weather Service, that does not give you any authority to break traffic laws such as speeding. Always watch out for the other guy. There can be lots of onlookers out there gawking at storms, so be sure to watch out for them and then make sure your vehicle is ready for action. Do you have enough gas? Do your windshield wipers work? Do your headlights work? Are your tires bald? These are all questions you want to ask before taking your vehicle out storm spotting. So that brings us to the heart of the matter. What exactly are storm spotters? Well, the National Weather Service needs reports of tornadoes, flash floods, wind damage, and hail to effectively warn the public of inclement weather. Unfortunately, as you'll see in the upcoming slides, we really don't have a good method to observe what's happening on the ground, which is ultimately what we're interested in. Storm spotter volunteers provide ground truth to what National Weather Service meteorologists interpret on radar. In general, spotters have an interest in the weather and a desire to serve their community. So who exactly are storm spotters? Well, we rely on a myriad of different people to help us out. Storm spotters can be private citizens, law enforcement, personnel, EMS workers, public utility. Amateur radio volunteers are a big help to us as are storm chasers. We also rely on hospitals, schools, churches, nursing homes, and really anyone with the responsibility for protecting others can be a help to the National Weather Service. The primary tool that we use to examine severe weather is our radar. Unfortunately, there's a pretty significant limitation when it comes to this tool. In the diagram in the center portion of this screen, you can see a schematic of two radars shooting their beams out into the atmosphere. What you'll notice is the beam gets further and further away from the radar. It also gets higher and higher off of the ground. And unfortunately, that means we can't directly observe what's happening on the ground. And again, that's ultimately what we're interested in. What is on the ground impacting people? Unfortunately, that means the radar does not typically see the tornado. It'll maybe see the base of the cloud that the tornado descends from, which is typically 1,000 to 5,000 feet off the ground, but it's not seeing what's going on the ground. What we can see is rotation in the upper parts of the thunderstorm, and what we need are spotters to tell us what's actually happening on the ground. So other than letting meteorologists know what's going on at the ground, how do spotters and reports from spotters help? Well, let's consider a couple of tornado warnings to figure that out. Here's one tornado warning from May of 2017 in Barron County, Wisconsin. The warning reads, a severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado was located near Sumner. The source is a radar indicated rotation. The statement says, take cover now, move to a basement or an interior room of the lowest floor. Now when you see this, when you see radar indicated rotation, what are you gonna do? Do you have much faith that this is a good warning or do you think this is just a meteorologist that doesn't know what he's talking about? Well, fortunately, the National Weather Service office that issued this warning did get a report of a tornado, and so they issued a new tornado warning. Now it says the tornado, a confirmed tornado was located near Sumner. The source is a public confirmed tornado. And again, it says to repeat, a tornado is on the ground, take cover now. Which one of these warnings are you more likely to react to? If it's me, I'm certainly gonna take the one where there's a confirmed tornado much more seriously. So keeping in mind that people are more likely to react to warnings that have got actual reports in them, we'd really like to emphasize that timely reports are of the utmost importance. Reports that come in as the storm is in progress are much more valuable than reports that come in hours after the storm is done. Ultimately what happens is the National Weather Service relays these reports through warnings and this information can help trigger new warnings or keep current, active, current warnings active. Finally, broadcast media are going to take these reports and relay, to the, relay them to the public. Ultimately, it comes down to the simple fact that people react. 
It's a confirmation source, and that can be what helps people go and take cover in these dangerous situations. So what exactly triggers a severe weather warning? Well, typically we look for three different ingredients, and if we meet at least two out of those three triggers, we're going to go ahead and issue that warning. The three triggers we look for are the environment, the radar, or a report from a spotter. In the environment, if we know that the conditions are favorable for severe weather, we'll consider that trigger met. On radar, there are various signatures and thresholds that we tend to look for that help let us know that severe weather is ongoing. And then finally, a report. If we get a report from a spotter that we trust, that's going to be one of our triggers. What this goes to show you is that between all of our understanding of the environment and the training we've had on radar, we hold reports from spotters like you in just as high of regard as we do those other two triggers. So what we'll do now is go through the entire storm spotting process. You can see we've got five steps listed here. What we're doing over these videos is the training or the first step. The following sections that are being recorded are going to be the next four steps and that's prepare, deploy, observe, and communicate. We'll cover a number of different things including what are your sources of weather information, is today a day to potentially spot, when do we go observe, how or where do we observe, what do we observe, and then how do we communicate. And what you'll learn in that communication section is that is indeed the most important step out of all of these.